Hey everyone, welcome to the Mind Magic's YouTube channel. Here, you will find insightful video tutorials to kickstart your tech career. Appraisals and greater career transitions are just around the corner. If you are the one looking for a brighter career and don't know just where to start, then worry not. Mind Magic's is here for the rescue. Having said that, today we bring you the AWS Developer Interview Questions and Answers to help you crack that next interview and land in your dream company. Beyond the basics, we want to set you up for interview success. So, we take our list of questions seriously. We analyze real job descriptions from sites like Indeed, Nokri, LinkedIn, and Glassdoor. But that's not all. We went a step further, surveyed and talked directly with experienced developers, top recruiters, and hiring managers. This insider knowledge means our questions and answers are laser focused on what you'll actually face in your interview. We categorized freshers, intermediates, and experience levels. Each level will have theory and scenario-based tricky tech questions. With thorough preparation and these top 30 interview questions backing you up, you're standing well beyond halfway through your quest to ace that interview. So grab your notepad and get ready to transform yourself into an AWS developer rockstar. That said, if these are the type of videos you'd like to watch, then hit that like and subscribe buttons and the bell icon to get notified whenever we post. Now, without further delay, let's get started. Repeat. Now, let's proceed with the interview questions and answers, starting with the first level, which is beginner level. And in that, the first category is scenario based questions. Now, the first question on the list is as follows Which AWS service is best for hosting a low traffic, static website at minimal cost and why? Now, your answer should be as follows We can use Amazon S3. For hosting static websites because it provides durable, highly available and cost effective storage for HTML, CSS and JavaScript files. Amazon S3 also supports static website hosting configurations and custom domain integration. Now the second question on the list. Which AWS service lets you deploy a web application fast without managing infrastructure? Now the answer for this question. AWS Elastic Beanstalk is ideal as it automatically handles infrastructure provisioning, load balancing, and auto scaling. Developers can simply upload code and Beanstalk manages the deployment stack. It supports multi languages and platforms as well. Now, proceeding further, we have the third question in the list Which AWS service is best for storing and retrieving files like PDFs and images? Now, the answer for this question. Using Amazon S3 for storing and retrieving large amounts of unstructured data, it offers high durability, which is 99.99%, and allows easy integration with CDN or Lambda for processing. Files are accessible via URLs or SDKs securely. Now, we proceed with the fourth question on the list. What advice helps a developer try AWS without billing concerns? Now, the answer for this question is as follows. We can recommend using the AWS free tier, which includes free usage limits for services like EC2, S3, and Lambda for at least 12 months. It's perfect for experimentation, learning, or building small projects without incurring charges. Now we have the fifth question on the list. How can you automate an EC2 instance to run only during office hours? Now the answer for this question, we can set up an AWS Lambda function with CloudWatch events to start and stop the instance on a schedule. This helps save costs by ensuring the instance only runs when needed and is stopped outside the office hours. Now, let's proceed with the next category of questions in the beginner level, which are the most frequently asked or general interview questions and answers. Now, the first one in that category is what is EC2 in AWS? The answer. Amazon EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud provides scalable virtual services in the cloud. It enables you to run applications and customizable instances with various operating systems and compute configurations. EC2 integrates with other AWS services like EBS and VPC. Proceeding further, we have the seventh question on the list. Define an availability zone. The answer to this question is as follows. An availability zone or EZ is an data center or group of them within a region isolated from failures and other zones. 
Deploying across AZs ensures high availability and fault tolerance for applications. Now proceeding further, we have the eighth question on the list for today. What is IAM? The answer, IAM or also known as Identity and Access Management allows secure control over access to AWS services. It helps define permissions for users, roles and groups to ensure the principle of least privilege is followed. Now the ninth question on the list. Difference between S3 and EBS. The answer. S3 is object storage used for storing unstructured files, ideal for backups and media. While on the other hand, EBS is a block storage used as a virtual hard drive for EC2 instances, offering low latency access and persistent data. Now we have the 10th question on the list. What is the use of security groups? The answer for this question is as follows. Security groups act as virtual firewalls for EC2 instances. They control inbound and outbound traffic at instance level using allow only routes to define accessible ports and IPs. Now we will move to the intermediate level of interview questions and answers on AWS. In that the first category is scenario based questions. Now the 11th question, which AWS service offers relational database with backups and failover? The answer for this question, Use Amazon RDS with multi-AZ deployments or availability zone deployments. It offers automated backups, snapshots, and failover support. This ensures high availability and durability for transactional applications. Now we have our 12th question on the list. What AWS option provides scalable APIs with minimal infrastructure? The answer for this question is as follows. Use Amazon API Gateway with AWS Lambda for a fully serverless RESTful API. This combo scales automatically, requires zero server management and integrates with DynamoDB or S3 easily. Now we have our 13th question on the list. How do you securely isolate developer staging and production in AWS? The answer for this question is, use separate VPCs or AWS accounts for each environment, enforce IAM boundaries and use AWS organizations for consolidated billing and control. This improves security and manageability. Now proceeding further, we have our 14th question on the list. How can you scale a web app through handle high traffic better? The answer for this question is as follows. Use auto scaling groups to add or remove EC2 instances based on the load and an elastic load balancer to distribute traffic. You can also integrate CloudFront for global caching. Now we have our 15th question on the list. You must ensure data is encrypted at rest in S3. How do you implement it? The answer for this question is enable S3 server-side encryption or SSE using either SSE S3 managed keys or SSE KMS customer managed keys. This protects data and aligns with compliance requirements. Now, let's proceed with the next category of questions in this particular level, which is general or most frequently asked questions. Now, it brings us to the 16th question. What is the difference between a role and a policy in IAM? The answer for this question is as follows. A role defines a set of permissions assumed by trusted entities who are users and services while a policy is a JSON document that defines permissions. Policies are attached to roles, users, or groups. Now proceeding further, we have the 17th question on the list. What are spot instances? The answer for this question is as follows. Spot instances are easy to instances offered by discounted prices based on unused capacity. They are cost effective, and non-critical or interruptible workloads, but can be terminated if demand increases. Now, we proceed to our next question on the list, which is 18th question. What is VPC peering? The answer, VPC peering connects two VPCs to route traffic between them privately using AWS internal network. It is useful for cross-account or cross-region communications without using public IPs. Now we go to the 19th question on the list. Explain cloud formation. The answer for this question is as follows. AWS cloud formation is an infrastructure as code tool that lets you define AWS resources in 
YAML or JSON templates. It ensures repeatable and automated infrastructure deployment. Now we proceed to the 20th question in the list. What are lifecycle rules in Amazon S3? The answer for this question is as follows. Lifecycle rules automate the transition of objects to cheaper storage classes or deletion after a set time. This optimizes costs and enforces data retention policies. Now we move ahead to the next level which is the advanced level and in that we go ahead with the first category which is scenario based. The 21st question on the list is what is a suitable AWS architecture for real time IoT data analytics? The answer for this question is as follows. Use Amazon Kinesis data streams to ingest data, Kinesis data analytics for real time processing and S3 or Redshift for storing analyzed results. This pipeline supports low latency analytics. Proceeding further, we have the 22nd question. How do you design a multi-region DR plan with less than five minutes of downtime? The answer, deploy services across multiple AWS regions with active, passive or active, active failover using Route 53 and RDS cross-region replication. Use S3 CRR and automation scripts for quick failover. Now we have the 23rd question on the list. Which AWS tools support zero downtime microservice deployments? Now the answer for this question is as follows. Use AWS code deploy with blue or green deployment strategy, possibly paired with ECS or Lambda. This reduces risk by shifting traffic only after the new version passes health checks. Now we are on 24th question on the list, which is how do you choose cost effective instances for machine learning workloads? The answer, choose spot instances for training jobs, saving plans for long term use and gravitation instances for ARM based workloads. Use EC2 auto scaling for dynamic control. Now we are on the 25th question. How do you ensure security encryption and compliance in AWS? The answer for this question is, use AWS KMS for encryption, CloudTrail for logging API actions, AWS Config for configuration auditing, and Guard Duty for threat detection, combined with Control Tower for governance setup. Now we move ahead to the next category in the advanced level, which is general or most frequently asked interview questions. Now that brings us to the 26th question on the list. What is Transit Gateway? The answer to this question, Transit Gateway acts as a central hub connecting multiple VPCs and on-premise networks. It simplifies network architecture and supports scalable routing policies across accounts and regions. Now we proceed further to 27th question on the list. How does AWS handle eventual consistency in DynamoDB? The answer to this question, DynamoDB provides eventual consistency by default for fast reads and strong consistency, optionally for critical reads. The choice allows you to balance performance versus data accuracy. Proceeding further, we have the 28th question on the list. What is the difference between ECS and EKS? The answer, ECS is AWS native container orchestrator, easier to manage but AWS specific. On the other hand, EKS runs Kubernetes allowing portability open source container management though it requires more setup. Now let us proceed further with the 29th question. How does AWS WAF protect applications? AWS WAF or Web Application Firewall filters malicious traffic for example SQL injection, XSS using customizable rules. It integrates with CloudFront, ALB, and API Gateway to provide security at the edge. And that brings us to the last question in the list for today, which is the following. Explain the CAP theorem in context of AWS services. CAP theorem states a system can be only guaranteed two out of three, consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. AWS services like DynamoDB prioritize availability and partition tolerance while offering optional consistency. 
And now, with that, we have reached to the end of this session on AWS Developer Interview Questions and Answers, the companies hiring AWS developers. Now, the popular companies like AWS, Infosys, Accenture, EY, Deloitte, TCS, the Big Four, Mang, and many more companies are actively looking for AWS developers. Now, with that having said, let's discuss the salary packages as well. Now, let's say you're working with these companies and you're located at United States of America, then you can expect the following salary numbers. Let's say you're a fresher, then you can expect salaries ranging from $66,000 to $95,000 per annum. Let's say you're an intermediate candidate carrying about one or two years of experience, then you can expect salaries ranging from $100,000 to $140,000 per annum. And then let's say you're more experienced more than three to four years, right? Then you can expect salaries ranging from $150,000 to $200,000 per annum based on the company you're working with and the project you're working in. Now, let's say you're working with these companies located in India. And if you're a beginner, then you can expect salaries ranging from four lakh rupees to nine lakh rupees per annum. Let's say you're an intermediate candidate carrying about one or two years of experience, then you can expect at least 10 lakhs to 19 lakhs per annum. And if you're an advanced level candidate carrying about three to four years of experience or even more, then you can expect at least salaries ranging from 20 lakhs to 40 lakhs or even above that based on your experience and the company and the project you're working in. Now we have discussed the companies actively hiring AWS developers as well as the packages for the candidates based on experience. Should you have any queries regarding any of the topics covered in this session, or if you require any of the additional resources for the preparation, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to assist you at the earliest. Until next time, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from MindMagics.